Hi, Juan. Good afternoon. Good, uh, maybe good morning as well and good day. So welcome to the uh, seventh uh, inaugural lecture where we introduce Professor Shanta Igoregi. So Shanta was to be introduced by uh, Professor Shanta Walpalagi. However, as we know of uh, trying times that we all are facing, he is unable to reach here. So I have to uh, uh, do the honors. And uh, anyway, as she is my head of the department, um, so you have to follow orders. So let me um, introduce her. And just before that, I, we all appreciate uh, Faculty of Graduate Studies at the University of Moratua. We all appreciate um, the new sponsor, the event sponsor that are joining. Uh, virtue saw as uh, sponsors uh, to event sponsor to this event so hopefully uh, we have a long uh, relationship uh, with university of moratua in um, this partnership and virtues are i must add, say that not only um, sponsoring the inaugural lecture but it's also uh, sponsoring the research magazine the bolgota plains so thank you virtues are our event sponsor thank you uh, Sri Lankan scientist, our social media sponsor, and Daily FT, our print media sponsor. So it gives me pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Shanta Kadagi. Um, she uh, graduated from uh, University of Moratu as a chemical engineer in 1992, and then completed her master's in the same university. In 2009, she obtained her doctorate from Loughborough University in UK. She's a chartered engineer, and a member of Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka since 2010, and a member of Plastics and Rubber Institute of Sri Lanka since 2006. I must mention here that she was recognized by the Plastics and Rubber Institute, which is the premier institute in this sector, uh, for her meritorious service to the national industry uh, in 2013. And she still plays She has been responsible for conducting lectures and laboratory classes for engineering undergraduates in the department and for postgraduate who follow the MSc in Polymer Technology Study Program. This is one of the oldest uh, MSc programs in the university. And uh, perhaps at the beginning, it's a continuously, um, every day the master's was held. Today, uh, that practice uh, is not really taking place. She has also supervised undergraduate and postgraduate research projects leading to PhD degrees and MPhil degrees. Apart from that, uh, Professor Garogi has been conducting research at the University of Moratua and the, uh, the Rubber Product and Process Development Incubator of the DSI, the university. This is also an industry venture in the University of Moratua, which has really given lots of uh, positive results. And um, it's, uh, we are very happy with uh, uh, that uh, partnership uh, that is with the department uh, and the industry and she leads in that. She is also a contract consultant at University of Sri Javadnapur in 2018 and 2019, responsible for conducting uh, lectures for undergraduates in the Department of Polymer Science and the Department of Chemistry at the University. Over the years, she has been a member of several committees and boards at the University of Moratua, including student awards and scholarship committees. Board of Appeals, Staff Student Liaison Committee, uh, Faculty Curriculum Revision Committee, you name it. Um, she probably had to be there as well on this. Um, so also Professor Gudagi was the director and member of Board of Management at UOM Cell SIL, uh, Rubber Product and Process Development Incubator in the University. Uh, something uh, that is interesting, she is a member of the expert team appointed by The Marine Environmental Protection Authority, MEPA, in 2021 for damage assessment of MV Express Pearl ship incident is actually a disaster. So uh, today, when we see, we are actually uh, having the anniversary of Express Pearl, the incident. 
Uh, it happened a year ago. She was a consultant scientist for the Public Interest Law Foundation uh, for the USAID Municipal Waste Recycling Program from 2019 to 2020, where she has contributed in multiple ways in dissemination of knowledge, uh, as well as in this very specific sector, uh, the plastic, where we all know in solid waste, we have a new issue. So she is interested in research areas related to rubber thermoplastic blends, rubber clay nanocomposites, renewable biomaterials in rubber compounds, enhancement in biodegradability of rubber compounds. My memory goes back actually a long time back in 94, I think, when she corrected me. I never knew that rubber was also polymer. Um, but uh, that's a natural polymer show. I remember this still uh, correcting uh, and telling me some new information. So uh, it's with uh, great pleasure that I invite Professor Shantai Kodage for the, the inaugural lecture. Over to you, Professor Shantai Thank you, sir. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, dear Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Dean of Faculty of Engineering here with me today, uh, the dear um, Dean Faculty of uh, Graduate Studies, Senior Professors, Professors, Let's, uh, my dear, my dear colleagues and students, as well as the all distinguished invitees. My journey with polymers, it's a uh, interesting story behind that. Uh, and today I would like to share highlights of my journey of polymers. And I want to talk uh, uh, a topic that is really interested in polymer industry, and that is on blending of rubbers and thermoplastics. I also want to talk about some outcomes of the successful research that are applicable for the polymer industry and my contribution towards development and development of polymer education and polymer industry in Sri Lanka. First, uh, I like to say what are polymers. Uh, polymers are, are can be either natural or synthetic and this are made out of long molecules called macromolecules. And it's a combination of uh, multiples of monomers. I started my journey during my studies, undergraduate studies, uh, when I was in university uh, in 1992. Because I'm a chemical engineer, and under the under our curriculum, there are two modules to be followed: uh, polymer science and technology in semester second year and polymer engineering in final year. In addition to that, I have a chance of undergoing implant training at rubber tire operation in Sri Lanka. Here, I want to mention two of my mentors, especially. Uh, those are Professor Mrs. Leela Sivagurunathan and Professor Kadapu Supramaniam, from whom I learned uh, basics of polymers. After graduating, I thought of uh, joining to the department as an academic, and I had a chance to join the Division of Polymer Technology of, attached to the Department of Chemical Engineering in 1993. That is the start of my academic career and I started the uh, academic career by lecturing and demonstrating to undergraduates and specifically to NDT students. Then to gain more knowledge on polymers, I started to follow a master's degree in polymer technology in part-time basis and I conducted research on polymers for the first time on the topic of preparation and characterization of scented encapsulated powdered natural rubber. The outcomes of this research was a natural rubber in a free flowing powder form and that is produced starting from the 
liquid latex form. And that will be a competitive raw material for continuous processing as well as it is a energy efficient system because normally in rubber industry, uh, polymer mixing is done with heavy machinery and solid rubbers are used. But if it is in the powder form, we can consider this as an energy reduction in processing and a good option for it. But uh, there are a big challenge for that, that is the large scale production of powdered natural rubber that are required for the rubber industry. Then I started a master's degree in master of uh, philosophy degree and that is again on a rubber based research uh, that the topic was the ultrasonic devulcanization of sulfur vulcanized natural rubber. Under this uh, project research, uh, high energy ultrasound is used to break the selectively break the bonds, specifically carbon sulfur and sulfur sulfur bonds in the sulfidic linkages without disturbing the carbon carbon bonds in the main macromolecule. And the outcome was a pre processable rubber mass and during sonication, the sulfur that is utilized in the crosslinks is released to the rubber mass and that sulfur was enough to pre-volcanize the same rubber mass without adding additional volcanizing materials. Then uh, after a certain period of time, uh, with the encouragement of the uh, academic staff specifically at the University of Moradour and mainly the main encourage person that I have to mention is Professor Ajit Dialdis. He actually forced me to do a PhD and I started the PhD on development of rubber thermoplastic blades from from ground tire rubber and waste polymers and to make a usable product combining the properties of the two polymers into one. Then research was successful and a variety of useful materials were obtained by the plastic waste and with the rubber waste and those are used for a wide range of applications and that is specifically based on their blend composition. With these images, you can see the two waste are combined and a resultant material uh, is a processable material in thermoplastic equipment and combining the properties of flexibility of rubbers and the stiffness of plastics, a rubber toughened plastic was developed. And by varying the composition, the properties were varied from brittle to ductile, and the phase morphology also varied from plastic continuous phase to the rubber continuous phase. And we'll see why the natural rubber is important to Sri Lanka and why I focus my research on natural rubber. Sri Lanka is a rubber producing country and is the 13th largest rubber producer in the world. Though Sri Lanka is produced natural rubber, the synthetic rubbers and a small amount of natural rubber is imported to fulfill the requirement by the industry. Rubber exports and rubber based product exports are uh, there because there are so many rubber industries involved in the exporting and the 8.4 percent is shared by the rubber exports of the total compared to the total exports. The import revenue, uh, sorry, export revenue is reached 1.09 billion in 20 US dollars in 2021 uh, but the rubber is exposed 
in as pro form as well as value added products. But still, 19% of the pro rubber is export. And the revenue is only 3.8% from the total rubber exports. Then there is a gap for value addition to the raw rubber. And therefore, my research areas were focused on natural rubber. If you consider the natural rubber, uh, natural rubber, the field latex or the rubber latex is kept from the rubber tree called heavier resiliencies. And there are two type forms of rubber is commercially used. One in liquid phase as concentrated latex and the other is in dry rubber form, either available in sheets or blocks. Concentrated latex is used to produce thin, ball and soft rubber components, whereas dry rubber is used to prepare composites specifically, and these are thick, hard, and having different components. You all know that rubber in which form rubber cannot be processed alone. There is a variety of Ingredients are required to approach to reach the uh, specific requirements for specific applications. The researchers in the whole world, they try to find or synthesize new materials because the developed countries, uh, based on their environmental health and safety factors, they impose restrictions for their imports. Then the regulations are getting stringent and restrictions are limited, limitations are imposed by day by day for the conventional chemical ingredients. As an option and to be globally competitive, the rubber industries have to find alternative materials that are comply with the new regulations. Then uh, my uh, research was focused again for the introducing new compounds for rubber industry uh, and that can be the can be a modification for a existing industry that are considered as safe and comply with the regulation as well as that can be the nanomaterials can be incorporated or there can be plastic source can be incorporated to meet these requirements. There are limitations as well as the expected properties are becoming enhanced. The conventional materials are considered as not safe because certain chemicals are released bad substances, that means uh, for release leachates as well as there are some bad emissions. In addition to the development of the technically advanced materials and the ingredients, I, my focus was is again on how to re recycle and reuse and recover the rubber waste. For that, photosynthesizers and some biodegradable materials were incorporated to the rubber network because rubber network cannot be broken easily without any treatment. Then this the waste is becoming a breeding grounds for insects as well as a huge burden to the environment. Then sonication or use of ultrasound Energy is a good option and that should be popularized among the rubber recyclers because there is no chemicals attached uh, in that process. Then I will we'll talk on the most interested research area that is blending of 
rubbers and thermocasters. That will be a kindly important topic because in Sri Lanka, plastic industry is separately operated as well as in rubber industry. That means rubber products are not manufactured in plastic industry. If you consider the differences between rubbers and the plastics, the rubbers ha are having high molecular weight and high viscosity. It has a high, it has an amorphous structure and have specific feature called elasticity. Because of that, rubber shows high flexibility. And that can withstand high pressures. In the other hand, plastics or thermoplastics are tailor made and we can produce according to the melt viscosities that we want and according to the molecular weights that, weights that we require. And the morphology varies from crystalline to amorphous. Because of crystallinity, it shows high strength, but shows low flexibility. Because the rubber uh, thermoplastic is stiff, rigid and brittle, if we blend these two materials, we can produce, as I mentioned earlier, rubber toughened plastic. Rubber thermoplastic blend is macroscopically homogeneous, but micro microscopically it is heterogeneous. That means the rubber phase and the plastic phase are different. If we compare, consider the preparation methods of rubbers, blends or the composites, because I have to talk about composites as well. If you consider a tire, tire is a composite. That composition of different materials into one. And blend is a material of two here, the, either rubber or the thermoplastic. And we can prepare these blends through melt blending. In that case, the temperature or processing temperature should be above the melting point of the thermoplastic. The continuous processes like we can use and for that we have to use twin screw compounding extruders. Otherwise, if you consider the batch processes, we can use plasticizers. In both the equipment, the materials will flow, melt, mix with the other ingredients and the reactions are takes place and finally the structure is structure over the morphology of the blend takes place. If you have the rubber and the plastic, if we mix more rubber with less plastic, we can have a simple blend in that plastic is in the dispersed phase but rubber is in the continuous phase because we have added more rubber into the blend. But if you add more plastics, the continuous phase will be the thermoplastic. There's another type in addition to the simple blend that is called reactive blend or the thermoplastic vulcanization. That process is called dynamic vulcanization. In that process, in addition to the rubber and the thermoplastic, there is another Material called crosslinker is added to crosslink the rubber phase. By crosslinking the rubber, it, the viscosity becomes high and it goes to the dispersed phase, although the rubber composition is much greater than the composition of the thermoplastic. If the thermoplastic vulcanizates are produced, always the continuous phase is a thermoplastic then we can process using thermoplastic equipment. Talking into the opportunities of the blends or why the blends are becoming popular in the world. 
by combining of the commercial available polymers, there is a potential to prepare or develop a technically advanced materials and can easily obtain the combined properties of the two polymers and it will give a synergistic effect. And it is more economical than synthesizing of a single new polymer to meet the specifications of the material that is required. By varying the blend composition, a variety of materials can be produced based on their blend compositions. This image shows the stress strain curves of the materials developed using natural rubber and the low density polyethylene. Low density polyethylene has high strain but less flexibility and rubber has high flexibility with low strain. In that case, combining those two materials, different materials can be produced and can be applied for to produce high performance products or as products with less performance depending on the requirement. Normally in a simple blend, the phase conversion is takes place at 65 to 70 percent of natural rubber. Then the other advantages of having blends is the use, ability to use of thermoplastic processing equipment. If the rubber phase is the dispersed phase and plastic become in the continuous phase, the plastic equipment can be used. Normally the rubbers cannot be processed by blow molding. If you incorporate the rubber into thermoplastics, the rubbers now also can be processed for blow molding articles. Since the thermoplastic phase is the continuous, it is recyclable. But rubber cannot be recyclable. Then uh, with the addition of plastics to the rubber, we can enhance the stiffness and strength properties and we have to use less amount of compounding ingredients in rubber in uh, producing uh, products with the blades. In general, rubber industry, there are so many fillers are added to increase the stiffness and to give the reinforced form for the rubber compounds and these compounding ingredients in large quantities that can be released to the environment with time, with use uh, during the period of usage as well as when it's becoming a waste. Then that will be an environmental problem if you use high quantities of chemical ingredients. But preparing blends and reducing the use of uh, compounding ingredients that will be an, a benefit highly benefited by the rubber industry and to meet the new regulations. In the meantime, use of rubber, natural rubber, in a technical, use of natural rubber as a technically important material uh, uh, with incorporating plastic is again benefited and that is a value addition to the pro-natural rubber in our country. The applications of the rubber thermoplastic blades can be varied. There can be soft weight blades. That means the continuous phase is rubber. The plastic is embedded as a dispersed phase. And we can use for food in the footwear industry as well as to produce different types of extruded, blow molded and injection molded products. High grade blades means in that blades, the continuous phase is thermoplast. Here we can add, produce different types of automobile components and proofing tiles, both 
surfaces as well as water sound barriers and there are so many applications of hard grid plates. Not only combining the virgin materials, we can produce materials or blends or the composites with wastes. That is an, another advantage, advantage of using proper thermoplastic blades in proper industry. Then what are the challenges? Proper is amorphous and thermoplastic is partially crystalline. Then the insolubility between is the main problem, main challenge that should be overcome. For that, we have to think on how the mixing is done because the key factor for compatibility is the melt viscosity during blending. The, both rubber and thermoplastics are inert, like that means it does not have some reactive groups to, to be generate or develop an interface between two incompatible materials. Another challenge is to obtain or achieve the required balance properties for a specific application. If we add rubbers and thermoplastics together, and initially it gives a Post phase morphology. By optimizing the blend conditions or processing conditions and by equalizing the blend melt viscosities, the rubbers and plastics can be blend to get a morphology with a fine manner. Here you can see from this picture how we can get the, how we can convert the coarse morphology to a fine morphology. If the particles are fine, embedded particles are in finer manner, it increases the surface area and have a better addition between the two faces. The next challenge is the find solid rubber as particles. Normally the solid rubber is available and commercially used either as sheets or as blocks. These blocks and sheets cannot be fed into the plastic extruders but then we have to have solid rubber in, in powder form or as particles to feed into the extruders. And that industry is not yet established in Sri Lanka. The morphology is the key factor to enhance, to obtain enhanced properties. In an incompatible blend, the SEM images shows a gap between the two faces. During stretching, the two faces are separated and the whites are created and we can see easily a phase separation. But if a partially compatible blade, the two phases are overlapped and there is no separation. To enhance the properties of a blade, we have to incorporate different types of additives that will enhance the additions between phases or to enhance the cohesion between within the each phase. The incorporations can be either a compatibilizer or a coupling agent, a functional filler or a novel curing agent that is not commonly used in the rubber industry. Since the blend is a heterogeneous in microscopically, the tan delta curve in the thermal characteristics that shows two peaks for two glass transitions of the two materials. But 
if we use a compatibilizer or to have an addition of cohesion inside the blend, the two glass transition temperatures becoming closer and show some but homogeneous nature. If it becoming a single peak, that means it is perfectly homogeneous and that cannot be expected from polymer blends at all. Here I included again a stress print. Reactive blend with a compatibilizer or the compatibilizer is activated and in the ground tire rubber, it's a rubber based and the base polypropylene blend and to devolcanize the rubber, a delinker is added. Then you can see how the properties are improved with the addition of compatibilizers and the other secondary materials. In addition to the external materials incorporated, the two polymers can be modified to enhance adhesion or the fine morphology of the blends can be obtained through process optimization by variation of the time of blending, the temperature of blending and the mixing speed. This is another result of one of my research, one of our research studies. Uh, if we add the small amount of curing agent, we can see post morphology, but change in the loading of the curing agent, we can have the fine morphology to improve uh, the properties that we require. Other thing, we can enhance the addition or the collisions. By enhancing, uh, by changing the mixing order. Here you can see a co control that means without adding any coupling agent, but we add the coupling agent, we can enhance the or we can reinforce the polymer, uh, polymer blade, and the mixing order will give different properties suitable for different applications. I have contributed for different studies on developing rubber thermoplastic blades. LDP is incorporated natural rubber with a coupling agent. And LLDP, another grade of polyethylene, is incorporated to natural rubber with, with a coupling agent. And HDP is incorporated to natural rubber using an functional filler. Similarly, the waste materials are combined together for industrial applications. In that studies, uh, high density polyethylene waste and the ground tire rubber is added with fly ash as a filler, as well as waste polypropylene and ground tire rubber is blended with a compatibilizer. The research outcomes and how I disseminate the knowledge that I gain doing research on rubber thermoplastic blades. Uh, through, I published several papers as well as presented in conferences. You can see there are so many co workers work with me, and always I thankful for all of them. Uh, here you can see some applications. We produced a two-layer mud guard and is commercialized. As well as prepared a floor tile combined in rubber and thermoplastics. And it is again successful. This is another successful application, uh, but that is yet to be commercialized. The commercialization was a bit delayed due to the financial situation in the country because the investment is, uh, the company's company involved is thinking about the investment uh, at this stage. The simple blends are produced and then with that simple blends we produce pellets 
and then out of those pellets uh sheets corrugated sheets were prepared as well as uh the high density polyethylene and natural rubber blends were used to produce prototype proofing sheets and this project is funded by nrc uh in addition to the combining of virgin materials the waste materials are also incorporated and produced a low cost proofing sheet and in that case uh, waste high density polyethylene ground tie rubber and fly ash that is from uh, sri lankan raw material uh, and we give the value added to all these materials and produced a commercially viable proofing sheet this proofing sheet that is produced is competitive and it's competitive over the traditional roofing materials because since the rubber plastic is uh, less dense and less weight lightweight than asbestos and clay types due to the lightness a simple support framework is required and it is free of health hazards compared to asbestos actually this project was started in 2014 when the asbestos was going to ban then uh, this material is not transparent as polyethylene and pvc roofing sheets and it's advantage to use in for household rubber into the plastic it becoming a tough material and it withstand for impact loads and it's a an good advantage for using as a roofing material the brittle plastic is converted to a tough plastic using uh, incorporating rubbers and it's non corrosive compared to compared to uh, metal roofing and the main important factor is it is homogeneous having a homogeneous cross section nowadays there are plastic roofing sheets with three or four layers these are layered structure pvc roofing and it's popular but this plastic this roofing material gives an homogeneous cross section and if it is one point is damaged that will not effect for the properties of the roofing material since the continuous phase of the material is plastic that can be easily recyclable after use in addition to the blending uh, development of rubber thermoplastic blades we uh, with the co-workers we did some uh, researches that are important to the rubber industry in sri lanka what important research was incorporating nano clay to rubber to make a rubber master batch as i mentioned uh, in rubber industry uh, either sheet rubber or block rubber is used the powdered rubber is not popular at all and not producing in this country and in to get the reinforced melt of the rubbers and to enhance the other properties different types of ingredients are added that can be not safe if we consider the environment and the safe, uh, health with the small quantity of nano materials the same properties can be obtained and they are similar to the rubber vulcanizing that are prepared with the highly loaded conventional fillers in rubber industries the large quantities of powdered fillers are added in the factory itself but 
if nano composite or the nano filler incorporated rubber material or rubber mass can be used as a raw material in rubber industry the rubber in the flow will be a nice place will be a nice place that if you visit a rubber industry you can see there is no much clean environment on the factory floor here uh, the challenge is to get a stable nano clay dispersion because we have to have the clay dispersed in water first to make the aqueous dispersion in this study uh, clay dispersion is incorporated into the natural rubber latex and then the master batch is produced normally uh, either sheets are, or block rubbers are produced starting from the concentrated latex but they are the acids are added to coagulate the rubber mass to make a dry rubber or the solid rubber if nano fillers are added in rubber industry using the conventional rubber processing equipment the conventional nano composites are produced they are the nano platelets they, those will be not separated to give enhanced properties there can be intercalated or the exfoliated structures produced but main challenge is to obtain the exfoliated structure in the master batch and to retain this exfoliation when compounding with the other ingredients using high energy intensive rubber processing equipment and another challenge is to obtain the greater mechanical properties at low nano clay loadings the outcomes of my research uh we uh, found a new method to produce nano clay composites starting from the natural rubber latex then that was successful and the rubber initially this make a dis in the take into the dispersion form and this aqueous disper dispersion is incorporated into liquid latex and then the uh, clay exfoliated structures are formed and then it the liquid nano composite is dried or coagulated in situ the clay is dried as well as the rubber becoming into a dry form the new method did not uh, incorporate any acids to coagulate and instead use different types of uh, coagents and mod modifiers to prepare organically modified clay and it was success and a nano clay master batch incorporated master batch was prepared at 2 phr that means 2% of nano clay in proper nano composite this rubber is contain only a less amount of nano clay but it, it can be shown good tensile and tear and the high hardness and high modulus as well as very good properties if we want this rubber master batch to produce a low performance uh, applications the conventional fillers can be loaded and the product uh, cost of the product can be reduced if this master batch is used and in the industry there are many opportunities and the different types of chemicals that are used can be cut down and reduce and make the materials more environmental friendly but very high results can be obtained by incorporating small amount of nano materials then the leachates also can be reduced 
another successful research that is applicable for the rubber industry was incorporating of biomaterials to rubber composites. There are so many biomaterials were incorporated to latex as well as to dry rubber because my research were broadened, uh, it's in broad areas and covered both latex industry as well as the rubber industry. Then corn derivatives were used, banana fiber, coconut shell powder, as well as tea waste, uh, biochar as in replacing carbon black, as well as wood derivatives are used as antioxidants in solid tie industry. In addition to these biomaterials and to enhance the rate of degradability, the pro degradants were also used uh, to speed up the disintegration or to promote the oxidation of the rubber. Because rubber is having a chemical network, three-dimensional chemical network, and without any special treatments, the rubber will not degrade uh, under normal atmosphere, and it takes about more than eight years sometimes. Then to speed up the in disintegration, then uh, metal oxides, transition metal oxides were incorporated and at a limited time period, the rubber, rubbers were able to be degraded. The challenge, there are so many challenges using biomaterials. One thing is compatibility of hydrophobic rubber matrix and hydrophilic cellular fibers or the powders. And the other thing, most of the biomaterials show very poor strength. Then the incorporation of the biofiller loadings are limited and not, uh, the result, because if we increase the loading of the fillers, the quality of the product will go down. The another challenge to identify the bacterial species that consume rubber and those bacterial species should be available in most of the any type of soil because we can't local, uh, develop the bacteria in a localized place and uh, to dump those waste rubber in that particular one. Another challenge is the prolonging of the lifetime of the product while enhancing its biodegradability. That means the rubber product should be used maybe for two years if you consider the rubber sweeper and after that, that should be degraded within a short period of time. Then antioxidants are adding to prolong the lifetime of a product and pro oxidants are adding to enhance the biodegradability after it's used. Unfortunately, there are no international or national standards to measure the biodegradability of rubbers. We also have to use uh, standards that are established for Uh, and this test is done for composting conditions and for aerobic digestion. Only 40% degradability is obtained within 180, 180 days. But to validate the biodegradability of a product, the 90% of the hydrocarbon to be degraded within 180 days. But, it, but that limit is for the plastics and not for the rubbers. The rubbers cannot be easily biodegradable because the sulfur and other substances present in the plastic, these are giving harmful effect for the bacterial species that are populated. We were able to produce 
uh, disposable gloves by incorporating 20% corn grain starch and then uh, this in this case this test is conducted to find the biodegradability in soil burial uh, in aerobic conditions and only 50% of the biodegradability is obtained within 15 weeks. But if you in, uh, incorporate, increase the corn grain loading, we can achieve 80%, even 80% of bioreactivity within 15 weeks. However, it gives poor uh, properties and we cannot use for processing of latex products. There are so many uh, projects that are conducted with Samson compounds, uh, private limited and with the uh, Samson International PLC company. Uh, and these projects are belongs to the rubber process and product development incubated at the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering. I was uh, a director in the incubator as a member of the board of management. And I served from the beginning of the incubator to the incubator as a research advisor. And by now, more than 40 projects were uh, done. And some of the projects were commercialized. And my journey with polymers will never end. That will continue for the development of polymer education and polymer industry in Sri Lanka. I closely worked with Plastic and Rubber Institute of Sri Lanka. And since 2006, and I'm a member of the Education Advisory Committee. And uh, the Department of Polymer Science at the University of Sri Jayavadanapura, now they are expanding uh, their uh, department. And there are four courses currently conducted. And I was the uh, founding member like, for the Polymer Science Department. During my sabbatical, I was attached to the Department of Chemistry and uh, developed this department. And now it is progressing well. Uh, still, I work as a research advisor to the Samsung Compounds and uh, Samsung International Companies in the DSI group, as well as I co closely work with Rubber Research Institute of Sri Lanka, Industrial Development Board, uh, the rubber sector of the Industrial Development Board, and Ministry of Industries, Export Development Board, and with the SLAP. That is to develop policies and to have, have some projects. Uh, considering the environmental pollution gen, uh, with the generated rubber waste in large quantities as well as the plastic waste, I serve as a consultant scientific for the Public Interest Law Foundation as well as working with Environmental Committee of SLAS. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, I suppose you have, uh, you, whether you can give price to you had 19% uh, uh, of raw rubber still going and 43 million. And this day and age, yeah. uh, if you can shift that to the 1. Point, at the 1.09 billion, and then also with nano and in, in the 1.09 can be further pushed down to the 2 billion. That should be maybe the way uh, you can give life to the, life to the, the in future. Uh, so thank you. Uh, just to uh, complete the process, may I invite uh, uh, Professor Nalin uh, to the Faculty of Engineering to hand over this uh, small talk on the presentation to uh, Thank you very much, uh, Professor Shantai Gurugi, uh, for that uh, in-depth foray into uh, rubber technology. And nice to know that uh, we have that kind of uh, depth of expertise um, in our university. 
particularly because uh, rubber technology and the rubber industry is uh, something that is very important, not because rubber is a natural product, but uh, we know that uh, Sri Lankan rubber is the best rubber in the world. So we must get, as uh, Dr. mentioned, I think we must uh, earn uh, much better than one billion dollars from uh, rubber products. So your expertise is particularly useful for that type of endeavors. So uh, with that, of course, uh, I have a little uh, token of momentum, a uh, token of appreciation. Thank you very much. Uh, for the with that, we closed uh, to today's session. Thank you, Vachusa. Thank you, Scientrix, uh, Sri Lankan scientist, and also thank you, JDFT. Until we meet again, good night, good evening, and good day.